Yo, what up, guys? I'm over here at Crafting Growlers getting ready to check out these new beers that Ingenious is dropping only here in Crafting Growlers. I'm going to hang out with Robert, a few other people, and try these new Infinity Stones out. You know, beer edition. Check it out soon. Does he have a rapist face? He has rapey eyes. Exactly. He has rapey eyes. Exactly. So if you ever hear Willem Dafoe rape 100 people, you'd be like, I can see that. I can definitely see that. You see, then Dom took a step further and was like, Willem Dafoe raped like 100 men. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. He's a ginger. No, I don't think he's a ginger. Is he a ginger? Oh, okay. By, by the way, by the way, this is how the po other podcast that we recorded earlier went. So as you can tell, it's a little later now. Everybody's a little happier now. Uh, this is our second podcast. I'm just we, yeah, 40, a few 14 percent beers later. What I would say is this: I literally deleted the audio of the last podcast after showing people how good it was, and then fucking it up. So sorry, Dom. No, Dom, you're not in this one, and I blame you for losing the audio. So. With that being said, I also want to say thank you guys for being on the podcast. This is another week in drunken public. Uh, Thanks to Crafting Growlers and uh, Robert who allow us to come here and drink the beers. Thank you, Robert. Uh, allow us to come and drink the beers earlier before everybody so we actually know what we like. But she hasn't tried the beers yet. I have not. So, is her journey we going to follow? And delicious welcome. Here we go. <laughs> and she was a special guest on the last podcast because she just ran, <laughs> straight up ran into the podcast and said hi. But not to us, to her sister. That's me. <laughs> Always late to the party. So, introduce our guest today is going to be Kevin on the far left. Not Becca, Sarah, Sarah, not the school teacher. <laughs> and then Becca, not the school teacher either. No. Got it. No teachers here. So also FYI, you guys won't even get the footage, but I just want to throw it out there. When I introduced them earlier in the first podcast, I was like, school teacher. She was like, fuck no. Uh, yeah, no so guys. my confidence of knowing her name was went from 100% to zero. So I did not introduce them at all. Sarah with an H. So Sarah with an H. The H is the most Where's the H at? Yeah. There's Sarahs out there that only that have no H. Yeah, that's how the only way I was spelling. I didn't know you had an H in it. Damn. They typically strippers. Shots fired. So the H's strippers are not H strippers. The H's are school teachers. H's are school teachers, like you are. H's are princesses. No, no, no. He's Googling Google if you Google Sarah Princess. That's fourteen percent beard, by the way. Yeah. Strippers. That's what I Tamilin. Tamilin. What about uh, you, you, does your name have H in it? <laughs> Just Becca. No H's. Becca, no H's. Becca, no H's. I would like Becca. to apologize to the Sarahs that we know without an H in their name that are not strippers. I, don't think I, don't I stand think by my statements. <laughs> and she's sober. I am so. very sober. Uh, <laughs> not yet. We, it's not the first one. The no, first one is the blueberry. Is, uh, blueberry and papaya. Yeah. That one. Number seven is what uh, number one on yours is gonna be this one right here, young lady. Wait, this is number seven? That's number seven. The blue Cheers, is a, Becca. Cheers, salud, salud. It's a blueberry. Can you shoot a, it? No, drink it. <laughs> shoot it if you want to. You can shoot it. Go ahead. It's eight percent. This description on this one's wrong, don't worry about it. I can't remember, is it blueberry and what else is in it? Is it papaya? I feel, I feel like I'm getting more papaya than blueberry. Like, it's not really blueberry sweet. Blueberry and papaya, it's yeah. It's gotta be papaya, because I like blueberry, and all I taste in that is something I'm not a big fan of. It's gonna be very easy to it's drink definitely papaya. Yeah. yeah, definitely more papaya. But this, you know, the great thing about this one versus the first time we did it, these are warmer. Yeah. We have we yeah. sat here for a little bit longer. These yeah. are warmer, where when we first drank it, it was straight out the yeah. tap, super cold. Now you're gonna get more fruit flavors coming out. Exactly, so that's why we taste more papaya this time. I didn't taste blueberry the first time either. Some blueberry stouts, you get hints of blueberry. It's never like an overpowering. Yeah, when they're in a stout, Unless it's like, uh, was it Fruitwood? Yeah. From uh, Downers. That was the 
was like really blueberry, like in your face. But I always wonder, I always wonder how much blueberry does it take to get that flavor? Because a lot of people put blue, blueberry in it, yeah. and they say you put a couple of, uh, couple of 20 pounds plus. It takes 12 pounds. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. And at, 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 what yes, point, at what point do they use extract to get yes. like that flavor and not the actual berry? So it's, it's tough. I don't know when it comes to fruit stuff, but uh, papaya tastes great in here. Yeah. It's a good one. That's good. What do you feel about it? You're the first one trying it. Is that not delicious though? I don't like this. Fair enough. So that's strike one for uh, ingenious. I mean, it's, it's good. On the Becca with an H uh, scale. No H on the Becca. <laughs> Becca with no H. The rest of us liked it. It's, it's, it's good, it's just, it's too juicy. Like, it tastes <laughs> like an absolute juice, like I'm drinking well juice. And some people seek after the juice beer. Yeah. So you're in a well juice beer. Like me. Hit it up. I mean, I like the juice beer too. I like this. And it, mind you, I think it's like an 8%, right? Isn't it like 8 or 9%? I think oh, that one is. I like it more. I thought we weren't shooting it. I thought you we were I know you didn't like it, so. I guess. <laughs> I Fine. On that note, uh, you can shoot the next one. What's the next one? Well, before we get to the next one, quick question. What's number two? Number two is going to be the Mind Stone. It's going to be the double uh, New England style IPA. Did you have to tell us anything about this movie? Uh, do you watch Avengers? So there's one of those like you're when you go home you got the special guy coming to your house and you put down the Avengers and you just go you only watch the first five minutes and then you gotta pay attention. <laughs> got it. What is your favorite superhero movie? Mine? I don't the answer is Batman. I don't know. <laughs> the answer is Batman. Obviously Batman. I'm my Batman voice. You got a Batman voice. <laughs> this is my Batman voice. <laughs> I give it. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Two Nobody thumbs. ever does. Two thumbs up. I right give it a thumb. <laughs> and we don't know what direction. I, I think you're on the main course, but it's not ready for the public yet. <laughs> I can't wait. Wait, I can't wait. I need to hear a sample. No, no sample. Sorry. It's only the unveiling. You only adopted the dark. <laughs> I was born in it. I need to. I need, you know what? It's not ready. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> To the next beer. Uh, think about this. How do you guys eat your tamales? On that note, ketchup. With ketchup. All the ketchup. Ketchup and tamales are delicious. I do barbecue sauce on mine. Shut up. Yeah. I, I try it. I try it. Sweet baby rice. In a world uh, with chili and queso and verde like sauce, it. why do you put ketchup on tamales? It's, it's delicious. delicious. Don't be hating on tamales. Yeah. I don't hate on tamales. I hate on ketchup on tamales. I don't. First of all, I'm not Mexican, so I don't have a claim to say. Neither am I. Surprise. Yeah, yeah, but I like it with barbecue sauce. The ketchup is good too. But you get some really good barbecue sauce and put a little line on there on top, and you cut into the tamales. Mm. I'm gonna try it. I'm Mexican-ish. Yeah, we're Mexican, Polish. Yeah, I'm okay. Mexican. 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 All right, next beer. <laughs> <laughs> next beer. Uh, we're gonna do the. Uh, the Mind Stone, which is that double New England IPA, uh, four times hopped, dry hopped. It's delicious. So here you go, young lady. Cheers, cheers. Salud. Are we shooting it? Yeah. <laughs> what? A little crooked. That was fine. Let me correct it real quick. We'll be crooked. But what do you think about it? Um, hold on. See, this is what I like. That's Which one beer. is this? It's the, it's the double. Punch is a word. I like that. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it's just, it's, it's a little strong. Oh, yeah, punch is, yes. I like it. I, like I don't it. know what I'm tasting, but. Don't drink it all for wrong time. Whatever it is, I like it. It's good. God damn it, I gotta go the other way. I don't really like the way it smells, but I like the way it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, so I can get that on camera. <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> Becca, like what do you think about the beer? I don't like the way it smells, but I like the way it tastes. <laughs> I got it. 
Is that a plus for ingenious or no? In this case, yes. So maybe you don't like citrus, because citrus is a very pungent. You catch it in your nose. But it's delicious. Yes, I agree. I like citrus. It's, I love this one. Strong. I like whatever this is. So this it's is citrus and mosaic together, which are my two favorite cops. Yeah, it's good. So as far as the ranking right now, you got number seven as the which one you want that one again? Number Space Stone is number seven. Yeah, that pile one was good. This one's just it's it's, it's So you don't want it. Is it aggressive? It's aggressive than it's just I don't think it's aggressive. It's Well what is this is what it, this is what I would say about I would have assumed it'd be a fucking punch in your face, hoppy IPA. I expected a lot more in your face, right? A punch, but when you drink it, it's really, really smooth, and yeah. that's what makes it good. Because right. being four times hop, you're expecting the IBUs to be super high. You're expecting the IBUs to be like 120 plus, right? And to be hitting your face. But it's a lot easier to drink than what you would expect. Exactly, I, and it's really, really good. good. Like it's really good. I like it a lot. Yeah, a thousand percent. So, do we want to shoot this one? Oh, right, we're shooting it. Cheers! <laughs> no! What is your okay? Here's another good segment. What's your go to cheers? I don't know. So, what do you cheers when you cheers? Cheers! I'm a, I'm a woo girl when it comes to cheering. A woo? A woo girl. A woo tang? Woo tang? Woo tang? Woo tang? Woo tang for the kids. Woo woo! I don't do any of that. I just go woo and then I drink. I don't know about that. I don't know what any of this is. No, Google that. that that's a song of theirs, I promise. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's how they say it, but yeah. yes. I'm telling you that. I'm how they say it. I don't think we just have one. Woo ha, woo ha! I'm a little tough guy. I think more. <laughs> I think more times than I, I go with the generic cheers. And it's just very. In college, all we ever said was drink, motherfucker, drink, motherfucker, drink. And then we drink. I say Lahan. Lahan! <laughs> Not like the barbecue. Oh, okay. That's what I, that's what right. I call it. Is it Jew, it's Jewish. <laughs> I know. But it's it's Jewish cheers. The Haim. To Haim. No, that's not what he's saying. Great it's not, it's not, we're not talking about Fort Worth Haim barbecue. Haim barbecue is good. It Man, I love bacon bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to Haim. We don't know, we don't know that they're not Jewish. They're not Jewish. They eat pork over there. Where are so, we going? To Haim. On that note, we're going anyway, to the next beer. <laughs> it's okay if you're Jewish, okay, Haim? Wait, wait, first of all, no one said it's not okay to be Jewish. Like, hey, we love the Jews you? on this podcast. <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum. We love Jeff Goldblum. Is he Jewish? Yeah. Yes. No. First of all. Who's Jewish? Jeff Goldblum. Are we going to talk about you just going to say now? No. <laughs> first of all. Most overrated act of all time. Throw it out there. Whoa. Throw it out there. Next beer. Next beer. Oh I never thought I'd say this. So back to the Avengers. <laughs> back to the Avengers and doing reality stone. This is for you, Jeff Goldman. <laughs> Shout out. So Cheers. What, what, are, what hey. is this one? So it's a reality stone. It's going to be the double New England IPA with uh, blood orange. This is? Holy shit. It's one of my favorite ones out of this like whole set. It's delicious. It smells good. You can shoot that one. What? Fuck yeah, I'll shoot this one. It's good. It just tastes like a Jolly Ranger. Cheese. Ooh, can we, every time we cheers, can it's we cheers so to sweet. our favorite actors? Here's to Bruce Willis. Bill to Whoopi Goldberg. Hey, Whoopi Goldberg. Bill Pullman for president every day. I second that. He got to do the speech every time he Joe goes on TV. Joe Pesci in his baseball bat. Here's to Joe Pesci in his whoa, baseball bat. Whoa, whoa. You know he dies in the nameless field, right? <laughs> <laughs> He dies in every gangster movie he's in. He gets shot in the head or he gets beat to death. That's because he's so little. I identify with him because we're the same height. Joe Pesci died in everything but my cousin Vinny. I think he might have died off screen on that one too. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Your Honor. The youths did it. The defense is wrong. <laughs> the youths. I don't think I've seen that movie. I fucking hate that movie. I hate that movie. So this beer, I should say it does remind me of Jolly Rancher a little bit. It's straight Jolly Rancher. But it reminds me more of like the Italian soda, like you buy at a grocery yes, store. Yes, like the Italian like that's, orange soda. Yeah, like that's what it reminds me of. This it is delicious. Sure. 
Beggars want to want to add vodka to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's straight on vodka. It's all day. I'm gonna add fireball to this. Oh god. This would be like a good like like outdoor, like a swimming pool. Like a lazy river kind of day. Yeah. That this that is also good. I think yeah. this was ten percent, right? Is it really? I think so. Damn. Why are you getting to shoot all the fun ones? Uh because you let me shoot it. <laughs> okay, so scratch the swimming pool idea. No, as a great swimming pool idea. Scratch the swimming pool idea. I'll just be like, I'll pray to you, Whoopi Goldberg, save my life. <laughs> So to that point, fun fact, you know what her favorite river beer is? Which one? Stone IPA. It's a great river beer. River beer. Makes sense. I, I, I don't go floating down the river. I tie myself to a tree and I drink Stone IPA. And then I sleep really well that night. I agree with sleeping well that night. I just don't agree with the beer choice. I'm not a big fan of that uh, Stone IPA. My river beer is vodka. It was like my first love. We'll edit that out. Ever? Oh. What? My, my first love was uh, Manhattan Project, so. Yeah, I do love Manhattan. <laughs> everything they put out there. Shout out to Misty, Carl, and then uh, I forget the head brewer's name all the time. That was your first love? It's my first love of all time. Like, I've Manhattan never loved Project anything in my life you. until I met Manhattan Project. I don't know what mine Favorite brewery? Oh, hey, Panacolos. No, beer. Oh, oh no, it's sit down. <laughs> Yeah, this is a love of my life. Uh, the funny thing about it, uh, I Pentecost was the first brewery that came on this podcast. Uh, Who'd you talk to? We talked to uh, I forgot the the brewer. Huh? You talked to Finley, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was like two other people. I forget the other two names. But anyway, they came in. What up, with, they came in with cooler full of beer, and they came with a beer that were releasing that Thursday in the tap room. Nice. The funny thing about that story is, I drank the beer first. When I first started this podcast, I did not like beer. Well, the, the show originally was just a drinking show with my friends. I bring the liquor that I like, my friend Drew will bring the beer that he liked, and it just grew from there. So we had Penny Coles in, I let them know I'm not a beer guy. I had shots of liquor with them beforehand, right. before we started, and then we started drinking beer. Now, uh, Crush It is a phenomenal beer. I love Crush It. Crush It's good. It's a good IPA. And then they were like, the, the, the sit down on stage that was the releasing that day. Like us doing the podcast and, and uh, I was like, I don't like this one that you're releasing today. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the crush. Let's go back to the crush it. And it was releasing that day. Lucky for us, nobody was watching. Right. <laughs> Do you like sit down now? It's good. I know what. Here's the thing about delicious. Uh, so here's the thing about beers. I'm not a big fan of a lot of beers in certain styles. I'm I'm a really flat stout guy. I really like juicy beers. I like fruit drinks and fruity shots. But here's the thing, as I've grown to appreciate the beer community and beer people who make beer. They're so great. They're just such genuine people. They are. That's why this podcast is more, it went away from just drinking show to I want to showcase the beer community. Right. You know, I want to showcase Robert. Robert is allowing us to come here early to drink with him. He's not gaining nothing from him besides hanging with us. Yeah, right. Robert's great. So. Like, four times a week and he's, he's great with us. And, hey, so, and uh, shout out to Robert again. But this is why the beer show is just showcasing the beer community. There's certain styles I don't like, Goza's. I'm not a big fan of traditional style IPAs. New England is nice. Uh, but what I would say is, if it's a well-made beer, I will at least let you know it's a well-made beer, but it's not for me. A well-made. I will try things that I, I can tell it's well-made, it's just not my style. Exactly. And I'll keep trying, I'll keep trying, but at the end of the day, I, I, I'm part of certain styles. That's, you can tell when people like, it's just, it's just well-made. Yeah. That's well, because you can, test, you can taste the passion that people put into it. Right. Uh, now you can tell people who just threw things together and were shooting for something and then release it. You know, you know what? They tried, they missed, but it's whatever. I don't. It's not that I don't just disc, I discount those styles of beers either. But when you when you drink a style of beer you don't like, and you can still appreciate the effort put into it. That's when you know it's still that's a good made beer. That's right. a beer. Like Goza, like Manhattan Project Goza. I already told Misty when she said that's coming out, like I'm not gonna like it. It's a Goza. I hate all Gozas. I drank it. It's not gonna change my opinion on Gozas. But it's a great beer. It's a right. really good beer. Yeah. Like it's, seriously, it's a good beer. And I, I, anyone who likes Gozas or on the fence about Gozas, that's the one to go put on. You know? That's how I am with most like lagers and pilsners. Like they're very old style beers. They're just not for me. But you can taste one, and you know it's a really well. Penny Cola's uh, uh, Pilsner they just released. Bicycle Pump. That is a great beer. I that's a that delicious beer. Pilsner. Like, it's a rep that's a great re representation of the style that you shoot for for Pilsners. Yeah. A, because it's such a hard beer to make. Yeah. 
not ingredients wise, but any little fuck up you put on that beer, you fuck up the whole beer. Yeah. You know. And whenever I heard they were doing it, it was like, yeah. but it was actually really good. Jordan, like she said, Jordan did a great job with that beer. It's, it's an excellent beer. You got to take time with it. Listen, it's easy. It's, it's, the ingredients are not difficult to make a pilsner. The ingredients are very simple, very straightforward. But the thing about it, why it's so difficult, any mistake from start to finish will ruin the whole batch. Right. It will have such a bad off flavor. We like, I can't sell this. And some people try to sell that as a pilsner. No, but that's a well-made pilsner. I love pilsners. Right. You know, the reason why I love pilsners is not because they're the greatest beer of all time, but it's a good, it's a good in between beer. No, he's just gonna flash us. He's just gonna flash us. But it's a good, like a mixed beer in, t in between other things, or definitely a good poolside beer. Right. Like, I, I used to hate IPAs, and then I just kept trying them. I, you know what? That's a beautiful thing to say because everybody says the same thing to me when I first started. It's not that I like every IPA. Like what I do is I appreciate well-made beer right. and I can drink it. It's tolerable to me. Like, Robert can give me an IPA, a traditional style, hoppy IPA, West Coast style IPA. I may not initially love it, but if it's good, I can appreciate it for what it is. And that's how I think once you, become, once you get intertwined to the community, you know, meeting people who make beer, being on the beer side, or just being the consumer side and meeting most of the people who like beer, it's such a, A, inviting community, B, such a relaxed community versus the wine community, or even whiskey, because whiskey has some whiskey snobs and cigar snobs out there. You know, I've seen it, but it's not like that. You know, very few people here are snobs about it. Right. They all want to teach you, that's what I love. And everyone wants to drink together. Yeah. Like, like, and I taste the beer, so what is it that I, you know, like, people at Petacola, so they're a great example. I'll taste the beer, like, this is what, you know, I love this beer, and they'll take the time to explain to me what it is, mm -hmm. you know, how that beer was made, so then I know, going out into the world and trying other people's beers, okay, well, I know that I like, you know, this hop, or, you know, whatever it may be, and that's what, that's, actually, it's not even just them, it's any brewery I've ever been to. They, they were the first one that did it for me, but you talk to anybody who it is even in genius and go and bring it back to the genius we're gonna do the power stone which is talking about stouts exactly. the russian imperial stout 14 yes. percent made with coffee and cocoa cocoa that. nibs So it's a beautiful dessert, 14 percent, and you get to shoot that. <laughs> Turn up! It's on a, delicious, but it's on a Thursday. <laughs> as it warms up, you know what? I taste less boozy as it's warming up, surprisingly, because when we first had it, it was super cold. Less boozy? Less boozy. It's, very boozy. it's still boozy, but it was less it does, than when it first. It does feel less boozy than it did before. The flavor so helps cold. it. Yeah. Because this when, is a completely different beer than what we had earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Remember I was complaining earlier how light it was? Yeah. It's warmed up. It feels heavier. There's more mouthfeel now. Exactly. Than it was when it was cold. Exactly. Is, it, I like this a lot better than I did earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So if you drink the Power Stone, if you get a chance to drink it or come to Craft and Growl and drink it, uh, definitely sit on it for a while. Don't let that be your first beer. The drink, let it sit there, warm up. It's definitely a way better beer. Yeah, a little more coffee, like the bitterness from the coffee on the back end. Yeah, than what we got earlier. It helps. Cold. And help the coffee helps cut that boozy flavor that you yeah. had earlier. This is like a completely different beer than earlier. Yeah. But you get to shoot that. That's delicious. I don't know if I can shoot this one. <laughs> Do it. Do it, Lahaim. Lahaim. To Jeff Goldblum. To Jeff Goldblum. The love of my life. In the fly. What do you want to drink? What you doing? <laughs> uh, talk, we were talking about movies earlier and how we were disappointed, but let's flip that to beer. Any beer that's super hyped that you tried that you were disappointed with? God, I feel like this, is, like, this question is made for me, but I don't know if we have any of them. Where's my phone? So, uh, uh -huh. 
But you guys will tell me about the brewery that you love the brewery, but Bottle Logic was not the shit. We had beers here from Bottle Logic. I'm like, oh my god, we have to make this a stop. But once we got there, I was like, and I felt that's it was, crazy. I felt yeah. it was Everything that we've had from Bottle Logic here is like the the club releases, fundamental observation, yeah. the jam the radar, the stuff special like that. releases that you can't get anywhere yeah, you like. The stuff the like, from the brewery, like we both got a flight of stouts, and there was one stout that neither one of us could finish, and it just I was so disappointed. It was way too sweet. Just not a lot of flavor. It was, it was overall it was disappointing. Their IPAs were better than their stouts, and I've never heard anybody talking about Monologic IPAs. Well, I didn't know until you said it last time we talked that they had IPAs, because when anybody that I've had, like, bottle shares here, or just meet up with people, they have Bottle Logic is always like a special stout that they release. Yeah. Like, Fundamental Observation is a great beer. I mean, I've only had it a handful of times, and every time, it's fantastic. And again, we just made these spoiled, because that's what we had, because we were in the bottle. Yeah. That sucks. As that far really as individual sucks. beers that I've had that were disappointed, I'd probably say uh, probably Dark Lord, Wave Lloyd's. Okay. People go nuts over that beer. I've had it probably three times now. It's just like, I, just, I don't know that I would go out of my way to find it. Yeah. Uh, my Which is such a point. I love Three Floyds. I love everything they do. But Dark Lord I, is I've just only had a, I only have one or two things that Bottle Shares. I don't, I can't have, I don't have an opinion as a brewery. As a total, because I haven't had much for them. Right. They're okay. They're yeah. good. They're good stuff. They have good stuff. Uh, from what I remember, mind you, drinking a lot on uh, different uh, bottle shares. The problem, with, the reason why I love bottle shares is I get to hang out with people I normally don't meet. Right. The thing I hate about bottle shares is we drink so many beers. Halfway through it, they kind of blend. Yeah. The new ones of beer tasting becomes lost. Like, you'll have one or two that will stick out that were really great, but everything else is just kind of a blur. Yeah. Yeah. That hits you, that hits you, yeah. And the worst thing about it is, like, I love Sean, I love the Dallas Beer Squad, but the way they open beer, so rapid, doesn't give you time to really appreciate yeah. the beer that you drink. But that's the quality that you go to when you hang out with the Dallas Beer Squad. Yeah. So that's the enjoyment you get with them, too. Different level of the Dallas Beer Squad. Yeah. And then like uh like a different Sean Jerry. and Jerry and like all the different bottle shares in the area. It's just there's so many good beers that you can have, like that we've had just like one of the bottle shares that yeah. you can't get unless you travel and you go around or you know somebody and every one of us they're all outstanding. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have had those bottle on beer that were still if it wasn't for those shares. A thousand percent. I think Sean and Beer Home get a lot. You can keep your phone out. Call your food thing. Is that Jeff Google? But the good thing about bottle shares too is it allows you to share or to try like beers from other areas to compare it to the beers here. Yeah. And I know a lot of people that like, for lack of a better term, will take a shit on the beer scene here. But you don't find this beer be it made here. You don't find it on this podcast here. I challenge everybody every week. I always say this every time I talk is I think DFW has the best beer community. The beers are good, but that's not what I talk about. I said the beer community with the beers we have is hands down the best. Yeah. The people, the groups, the, people the organization, the interconnectedness of everything. Uh, between like uh, a DFW, uh, Brew Squad, connecting yeah. with people doing uh, charity events, the Dallas Beer Squad doing bottles, uh, making beers with people, with Taps and Cabs and uh, Brutal Works, you know. Right. Doing collabs. Who ever heard of an individual bottle? Bottle share Craft people. Craft and growler doing stuff like this. Craft and growler yeah. doing stuff like this. Like this is a beer community that's interconnected from a patron level to an owner level that I don't see from any other community. Yeah. What and, about anytime we have friends come to visit, like we're we're glad to show it off. Like we'll take you for East Dallas to There's something there. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Well, I like it. From out of town, but let's go see our let's go see our friends here. Let's go see our friends here. Let's mm -hmm. go see our friends here. And then it, it, it's never, it's very rare that you meet a brewer out here that doesn't talk to the patrons. Yeah. They come hang out, they drink, and they go to other, another thing is, 
everybody here who works in the beer committee go to other beers and like like this place is a good spot this place is a really good beer i like these beers here and they talk about each other and support each other now there might be some some beef internally with certain people but that doesn't that doesn't put it like a, a negative feel in the whole community that's everybody knows there's individuals who have a personal problem and then leave it that way and everybody still support them and support each other like case in point, the Turning Point guys are great. Like we, oh, we have been there since day one. Phenomenal. Them. But I see them as much at Celestial as I do in their own brewery. That's just it's really cool how they all go to like each other. Everybody goes. So first of all, I went on a, I went on one date at Celestial. Never again. Ruined my date because I went there. We had a great like dinner, and I was like, oh, I know the brewery over here has really good beer. Let's go hang out. And it's open late. And it's like right around the corner, got there, and I'm talking to all the guys there because every brewery I want to do a podcast with, uh, everybody who I've done a podcast with was there. So everybody's taking pictures with me. Not like I'm a celebrity, but we're right. like, oh, let's take a picture. How rare is this to get everybody together? Let's take a picture. It was just the rarity of having so many people there from different, different groups. Let's take a picture. And then I was talking to people, giving out business cards, buying merch. Like, I bought Turning Current merch there. I bought Celestial merch there. I fucking bought Dom's hat there. It's but, random how many people end up there. Yeah. Like it's the central meeting point of so many breweries. So many beer groups Great and breweries. Location. Shut up. Great location. <laughs> she lives across the street. She lives across the street. Oh, so if I get drunk, <laughs> I'll be hanging out with her and Jeff Goldblum. Well, yeah. oh, maybe. As long, long, long as he has clothes on, I'll hang out there. Oh, I, I, I won't happen. It won't happen. No. I'll sleep outside there. We'll hang out in her pool in the summertime. <laughs> And then it's across the street. On, uh, we should do that. I'm just saying we, we can do a podcast. <laughs> we do a podcast. Always good. I'm in. We'll do we'll do a full podcast. We do a full. I'm down. I got the equipment. <laughs> Listen, I'm ready at all times. Uh, on that note, we do it the next beer number eleven, which is gonna be the Time Stone. Except the cereal one, right? Yeah, I it is the Time Stone. It's the Time Stone. It's really good. I like how you ruined that first top of that. Yeah, right? I, I don't still, know what you did there. I still beer. <laughs> and then I started picking at it. <laughs> It's a, a barrel day stout with vanilla beans and cereal uh, marshmallows. marshmallows. Cereal marshmallows. So lucky charm. I like how you said that. I was literally going to say that. I get that from now. That's the only cereal marshmallow. What is? No, it's not the only one. Oh, there's a cow chocolate one, but nobody eats that shit. It's delicious. Lily just named it, so somebody ate that shit. I knew she did. Freaking it. Frankenberry, what's up? Wow, I've heard Frankenberry since I was a kid. Shout out to that. Shout out to that. Shout out to that. Is it like Count Chocolate? What is Frankenberry? I don't know. Count Chocolate. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? 35. So, you're a little older than me, but we came from the same room. Frankenberries was really popular. How old are you? I'm 30. Okay. But. I'll be 30 in October. Yesterday was my half birthday. But I grew up with seven. Yesterday was your birthday. Yesterday was my half birthday. It's not a birthday. So. I grew up. I grew up with seven cousins, and I was the youngest of seven cousins. So that's it. I grew up with all my cousins too. Yeah. I think I have like thirty-seven. Cousins. I didn't say that was it. I said I grew up with seven. Oh. Okay. Understand the words I was saying. Not to interrupt, but if they ever shared a pizza with somebody, they're cousins. That depends what's on the pizza. It's fair enough. Fair enough. No, I actually grew up with actual seven of my cousins in one house, and then uh, the eighties was the big thing. So first of all, I grew up. But we grew up. My uncle worked at a, a, a local video store. Hold on, I've got more questions. Uh, you grew up with seven cousins in your house. Apartment. Oh shit, and y'all still got name brand cereal? Yeah. Shit. First of all, it wasn't seven, just seven cousins. It was a two bedroom apartment with five adults and seven kids. There was only four kids, and my parents never bought name brand cereal. <laughs> yeah, but it was also five adults paying rent. Right. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> no, no. We got Frankenberry. That's Don't what worry about Frank Frankenberry is. <laughs> First of all, we didn't get it all the time, but we got it occasionally, all right? Because we ate so much food. You got Walmart berries. Huh? <laughs> we didn't even have Walmart food. We didn't have Walmart. We, didn't have we had Walmart food stamp cereal. We had food stamp cereal. Yeah, well, it's not a Walmart grocery store. It's a 2008. I love town. That's when we go to Walmart That's for groceries. That's how small our town was. I grew up in New York City in the projects, so. You grew up in Mineral Wells. We got a Chili's in 2008 as well. <laughs> Did you say New York? Yeah, I'm from New York City. Go on a race. Tell me about those bagels. <laughs> oh, they're delicious. <laughs> they're high. That's like all I ever wonder about is the bagels. Like, are they really that fantastic? They are the best. The bread is the best. I mean, it. I believe it. It's just, I don't know if I should try to get to this time zone. To get bagels. 
Yes. The answer is yes and get to the time stone. I don't know which gets to the So time behold, time. the first three hour podcast. <laughs> you, you it wouldn't be the first. It wouldn't be the first. <laughs> this tastes just like Lucky Charms marshmallow. Is it really? Yeah. Well, we can't say Lucky Charms. This tastes just like the little leprechaun cereal marshmallows. It tastes like cereal marshmallows. <laughs> That is much better as orange though. Okay, it's called It's still really sweet. It's still sweet, but it is better. But, but the marshmallow flavor is through. a lot more. Oh, that's outstanding. That's really. Yeah. I still don't know if I could do much more than like this size. This is This is great. It's a it's a great bottle share beer. You do like three or four yes. ounces and move on. But it's for that three or four ounces, it's really really good. No, I love it. I what love the... it. At this temperature, I love it. I think all the beers at this temperature is really good. Side note, you like that professionalness that I did? I took off the mic and sneeze. Fucking professional. I will remember to do that. Uh, no, uh, this is really. I, you know what I'm thinking right now? I think these beers, as a collective, were all good, super cold, fresh from the tap. But. But they're all different now. All much better yeah. warmed up a little bit. This is not like hot beer, it's but it's good. warmed up to room temperature, almost room temperature. Is this one less sweet while cold? It's more sweet cold. It's, it's more sweet cold. Okay. That's, that's, that's you really know what's sweet for me? It is beautiful. It's I mean, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Actually, no, it could be less sweet. There's a lot more. It's a lot, lot more flavor. Sweet, but there's a lot more flavor now than there was cold. Definitely. Definitely. I like the way it smells now too. Jeff Blo Jeff, Blo uh, Jeff Goldblum heard her message. He's shooting. Her. I'm calling her right Already now. Already slid in my DMs. You want to shoot this? That's beautiful. That's a beautiful beer. I love it. It's delicious. So shoot this one or whatever's left. Shoot that one. That one. So so far through this round, that's my favorite. For the blood orange idea, was my favorite the first time. I still, how I ranked it at the end, I say number 13, the last one, was my favorite. Blood and Orange was my second favorite. Maybe that water? 13 will be interesting this time. Yeah. So, but, you know what's uh, the funny thing about it? I agree with you. In, in the re ranking of these things, this uh, cereal stout has jumped up from fourth for me to number two. My rankings the first time and the rankings this time will be completely different. Oh, shit. It's changed. A yeah. thousand percent. Still number seven for me. It was still number one, which is the, uh, the Space Stone. Still, just like, it's good. It's delicious. But it's not memorable like the rest. Right. The rest of them are all memorable in different ways. Yeah, this one was just a good beer. It's not, not, it's not knocking it. It's just a good beer, but it's not memorable. Oh, they've all been. They've all been. Yeah. So that's why I rank it seven. Houston? Yeah. Um, Humble. 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 I've been to the Humble Mall. I think it's about an airport or about a trip in there. It's north of an airport. That's an hour and a half from Nacogdoches. Fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> Throw it out there. Fun fact. That's fact. Name a Jeff Goldblum movie that's not Jurassic Park or uh, Independence Day or The Fly. Name what? A Jeff Goldblum movie. Versus the ones we already said. Uh oh. You're trying to prove a point. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what Jurassic Park 3. I only argument with the Jurassic Park. I only argument with the he's an attractive man. I didn't say he was that. All I said was name but a movie. That's my only argument. I don't watch what he does. You watch him on YouTube, apparently. I do, but he has a great person. Avengers. He was an Avengers movie. He's an Avengers <laughs> movie. God damn it, guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you anything you want to know about Space Jam. He's not in Space Jam. He's not, but Bill Murray is. I'll see you, bro. <laughs> I mean, Bill Murray watches your podcast, right? Yeah, he does. Okay, he does. So. Shout out to Bill Murray. Shout out to Bill Murray. I've watched a lot of movies. So, on the Jeff Bogum, he was in Avengers. Movie. Movie. He was in Thor. What Thor Ragnarok. Huh? Thor Ragnarok. He was in that. The hammer guy. With the long hair. Uh-huh. <laughs> and his last movie he made two years ago, Jeff, Bo Jeff Goldblum was in that movie. Any chance he was in the Mermaid one? The Aquaman one? No, he was not in that one. Different different series. <laughs> Whoops. 
So back to Avengers. Let's, let's go to the, the Soul Stone. Let's go to the Soul Stone, number uh, 12. It's a milk stout with uh, chocolate and orange. It's on me, bro. Damn, she gave it one sip. Not even a full sip. Not as much orange as I was hoping for. I don't taste any orange at all. It's very subtle. I don't like subtle. So why do you like Jeff Goldblum then? He's so damn attractive. He's so subtle. Nah, he's anything but subtle. Peppermint? Try that again. Peppermint I don't tea? think that's so specific. Not tea, but like on the peppermint side. Oh, oh, peppermint oh, tea. It, it, me, it, 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 it is kind of minty. It reminds me of a holiday in our minty. Happy holidays, y'all. My man's walking with a stick in his ass, like hard. Like, one, two, one, two. Switch it left and right. You're trying to get into the scalp bar. <laughs> <laughs> Switch left, right, left, right, left, right. Anyway, cutting that out. Cutting that off the podcast. You can edit these things? <laughs> this is not live. Oh, you want to talk about Disney movies? Disney movies? So, Becca. Yes. What's your favorite 80s movie? Blues Brothers, hands down. Blues Brothers. What? Yes, you have. All right. We're on a mission from God. Okay, okay, here's the thing. We said the favorite 80 movies earlier. Can we just name like the top three or top five that Blues you love? Blues Brothers takes the first four. Karate Kid 2. Top three 80s movies? Karate Kid 2. In Brothers your personal opinion. Blues Brothers, Karate Kid 1. Karate Kid 2. Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers, Karate Kid 1. Who was the villain in Karate Kid? Santa. He was not the, he was not the villain. The Cobras. No, the Cobras were not the villain. Guy? Cobra Kai was not the villain. Uh, the main character that you wallow, he is the villain of the whole show. I think it's the I girl. The main karate kid was the I villain. Think, I think it was the girl. She was she, she was bad, baby. Daniel Sun could have done a whole lot. Daniel Sun, Daniel Sun started fights for no reason, and Daniel Sun tried to steal somebody's girl. Mr. Like, steal your girl before it was Mr. Steal girl Your Girl. Was like the middle of all his drama. That he started. Yeah. That he started. No, she so she's only going to come up with one movie. What are your top three 80s movies? So for me, it's going to be uh, uh, Die Did Hard. Did follow that bird? What? I saw birds. Follow that bird. Again, I was going to say Die Hard. Die Hard is number one. Because Die Hard is number one. No, oh, Die Hard is number one. Well, Rocky Three is number two for me. Oh, the Sesame Street movie. Yeah. At first of all, that's a negative. <laughs> that's a great top 100 in Pass. That's a hard pass. <laughs> what hard pass. Jenny? <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> so, and then uh, number three is hard for me because I flip and flop between oh, so Hellraiser, uh, it's a, uh, 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 Die Hard, okay, yeah. Rocky Three. Solid Rocky Three, which one's that? Uh, uh, I pity the fool. I pity the fool. Eighties. That's eighties. Eighties. Hang on to your time. Yeah, yeah. Hang What's on. Number three. <laughs> number three. I fight between uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street or or uh, Hellraiser. What's Hellraiser? Uh, Hellraiser, the greatest horror movie of all time. Is it actually scary though? Uh, okay. Yes, it is. Oh, I don't know. All I know is Blues Brothers. It came out in the eighties. I mean, the reason why the reason why I flip flop between Hellraiser because I love the Hellraiser franchise. I got all the comic books and the movies. I like uh, Friday on uh, Friday the 13th, or not Friday the 13th, I mean, I said Friday the 13th, but Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, the first Nightmare on Elm Street is the first movie Johnny Depp dies in. Right. They kill him in the first 10 minutes of the movie, it's the greatest thing what of all time. Johnny Depp? He oh. wouldn't die. No, he died, he died for real. What are some other popular <laughs> 80s movies? They might be giving our way hard. I, I need some help, pretty, I don't know. Pretty, pretty, pretty in pink? Oh, no, terrible. Uh, 16 Candles, Major License League. to Drive. Ghostbusters? Major Go- League. Parking out with Plus Ghostbusters? Major, Major League came out in the 90s. Did it come out? Major League came out in the 90s. Major League came out in the 90s. Uh, I think Major League 1 was like 89. Nah, I think it was 90. 
like 91. He's still crying in baseball because he made it after Philadelphia, which I came out and Philadelphia came out in 92. My Google's just picking you up. Maybe New York Just Google with your hands. Uh, a League of Their Own. No, oh, terrible movie. A League of Their Own? Oh, I thought you said League of Their Own. My bad. You said Major League, right? A League of Their Own was 90s, yeah. Yeah, I said League of Their Own. I heard League of Their Own, yeah. and I was fighting for no reason. You're right. Because I was like, there's no crying in baseball. That's there's the no thing. Baseball? When did the Goofy movie come out? I thought like the League of Their Own the was 90s. That's 90s. That's 90s. I, I, what are you talking about? No, I've got like no you suck right now. It's not my fault. Yeah, it is. It's your phone. Are you on Wi-Fi? Get off Wi-Fi. I'm trying to think of movies Mom made me watch in the 80s. Mom didn't watch a lot of what movies. What about where? Uh, 89. Major League is one of the top Boom. ones. Boom. Right? What about where Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Recall? Uh, no, no, no. Recall? The Christmas one? <laughs> what the fuck? Throw Mama from the train? <laughs> no, you're talking about brothers. Twins. Twin brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that came out in the 90s. See, I'm just trying to remember my childhood. Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Back in the future, Ferris Bueller. Ghostbusters, E.T. I think E.T. was I'm great. I'm going to go ahead and take Die Hard, Blues Brothers, and Back to the Future. I enjoyed E.T. Oh, Princess Bride came out then? I didn't I go Princess Bride. Top Gun? This is, is going to make great podcasting, y'all. Very random. Yeah. Beetlejuice is great. Oh, Caddyshack, hands down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Trading Places? Whoa. Oh, oh. Calm down. Yeah. What is it? Na- uh, Nightmare on M Street came out in 84. Nightmare on uh, M Street came out in 84. What the fuck? Coming to America. Coming to America is the number one 80s movie. Trading Places? Die Hard, Coming to America, Trading Places. Move. Yeah, trading Places, Blues Brothers is all I need on my list. I finally watched Trading Places last year and it was great. Do the Right Thing, classic. Scarface, classic. Beverly Hills Cop. I've never seen any of them. I haven't seen Scarface. Get the fuck off. The Get off the podcast. The this Godfather podcast, movies. we're wrapping this back up. She, she said she never saw Scarface. Or the Godfather movies. Wrap this podcast up. I appreciate you guys I've for seen, listening. I've I'm playing. I've seen Casino like nine times. I've yeah, but you didn't watch the classics. It's because everybody's like, oh, it's so good. I can't How have you never it. seen The Godfather? Because everybody's like, oh, it's so good. You gotta watch it. I'm like, I don't believe it. The Thing came out in the 80s. That's a classic horror movie. The Thing. What's The Thing? A classic horror movie? Basically, these people are trapped in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a research facility, and this random creature, alien creature, that can transform into anybody starts body snatching people and killing people one by one. And you can't really tell who's who. So it's a psychological thriller. Uh, the Shining, Aliens. Aliens. Aliens is the second one came out in the 80s. Beverly Hill Cops. I mean, you know, Beverly Hills Cops to, is good. You gotta agree that Coming to America is the number one movie. Yeah. Trading Places is good. Kevin America. You can go to sleep in it. You made it to the first five minutes and it's no, falling no. around. I, classic, no, classic. Okay, Coming to America, I did not get through. The Trading Places is good. You did not, not get through, through Coming, coming to, America. to America. You went to sleep. The pool scene, I was just like, I was done. I was the best. So I you, apologize. You no legs is hilarious. I apologize. On that note, on that crazy note. So we have one beer left. <laughs> we got the infinity, uh, infinity hops. With six hops. With six hops. Opa. Ah, man. So this is triple IPA this, hops. This should be interesting. With six hops. Delicious. It was my favorite last time. Good? Not much change from last time. Like, it's still really good, but not much change. Still my favorite. Yeah. Still my favorite. But that uh, that uh, cereal one changed in my cereal became my number two yeah. for me. Y'all The last time around was really good, but down this is my number three. 
I think this guy around, I would go this number one, the cereal number two, the blood orange number three. Yeah, same here. So, what do you think of the rankings? Shoot it, it's your shot. That's all you I don't know. So, Mecca, how would you rank them? I'm such an asshole. You said it. Okay, so what was this one? What was the first That's number three. So go by the list. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But disregard number one, because number one is not right on there. What was the one up? So which one? Point at the glass did you like? I thought it was this one, but I didn't. Number three was the... Was the blood orange. Okay, yeah, the blood was, orange. No, I didn't like the blood orange. Oh, God. That was our favorite. Alright, this is going to have to be my favorite one, the one we just had. Number seven, yes. Infinity Hopped. That one's my favorite. I love all of the hops. That's all I ever want. And then, I guess it would have to be the papaya one after that. And then we move on to the stouts, and they're all grouped together. I like the marshmallow stout the most. Yeah, and I like that. My least two favorite were the... Well, the, the pomegranate? Blueberry, the blueberry and the blood orange were All the other ones just kind of were pretty equal with each other. I liked all of them. So what, hit that part out. Blood orange. What? I can't say what my least favorite one. It's the marshmallow one. Okay. So we all agree like number two was the marshmallow one, hands down. Everybody's number one is different. That was a lot better this time than it was. It's weird. As it warmed up, it's much better than it was before. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Agreed. Robert. <laughs> Robert, I need more marshmallows. Wait, yeah. More marshmallows, please. So on that note, guys, what I want to say is this. First of all, thank you for doing it two times with me, this podcast. Absolutely. I appreciate that. What I want to do is we do this podcast again with us actually just hanging out. Similar to what we did now, but more like on chill basis versus like reviewing beers. More chill than this? Yeah, this was chill, but more chill. A little bit more chill. Uh, but I had fun. We could definitely do this again. Yes. Anytime you guys want to come on the podcast, let me know. You guys are always welcome. Uh, if you ever want to do a cocktail now, we got a place for that too. We can also do, we can also do cocktails. Okay, <laughs> if we do that one, it has to be liquor based. Like, uh, we got a category about liquor and do segments of liquor. We, we know a place. I do. That could distract me. I'm rolling. I mean, I'm all in too. I'm, the, I'm a rum and whiskey guy. I'm a, I'm a rye whiskey guy. So. I see. I like the sweeter whiskey because yeah. I'm a rum guy. So, excuse me. But I like, I like it all. I like gin and water. So, I, didn't get, I don't get which one you like. Gin and water. So, you like gin. Got it. I didn't get that the first few times you said it. I did not get that. But what's your go-to with uh, liquor? Uh, bourbon. Bourbon. I love it. Have you been in Kentucky? Bourbon. Have you been in Kentucky? I have not been in Kentucky, but all my favorite seasons are from there. I'll be from New York City because I'm proud of it. Forget every other state. Uh, but <laughs> on that note, on that note, I, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I really do appreciate taking your time and hanging out a second time. And thank you for coming on the first time. It's, it's been fun. I want to do a special thank you for Ingenious for uh, sending these beers out to Dallas. These are all really good. Now, even though we ranked the beers of what we like, they all were good. In my opinion, they all were really, really good. Yeah. It was definitely a special treat, and we really do appreciate it. So thank you to Ingenious. Also, I want to do a special thanks to Robert from Crafts and Growlers and Crafts and Growlers for allowing us to be here and drink. So uh, it was so much fun. Thank you, guys. Definitely make it out to Crafts and Growlers if you haven't been here yet. And if the beers are still on tap, come get some. ACP. Let it warm up, though. Let it warm up. Agreed. Let the beers yes. warm up and get better. I didn't taste some cold, but they were really good today. So on that note, you guys, you have a special weekend. You guys don't drink and drive. Take a lift. Peace.